Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, I've just made this little natural edge bowl. Uh, it came out of a, a pretty ungainly lump of ash and uh, to get the alignment I wanted on the top uh, it required a lot of chucking and rechucking and generally messing around but I got what I wanted in the end. So I think that uh, this video will be quite interesting for any of you wanting to make a natural edge bowl. I have here a piece of carrot ash um, which looked as though it might be a burl uh, with some interesting grain in but probably isn't. Um, but it's an odd shaped block of wood which I know a lot of people would like to see turned into something because it was free. Um, but wood is never free. There's always a cost to pay somewhere in time or something else. So just uh, find center on this to start with or get an idea of where center is just take that out a little bit so I've got a steep side on on the back so to speak from where you are yeah that looks about right now I'm going to turn this on a uh, on a two spare drive so just going to put a V groove in there. Um, for it to uh, for the drive to sit into. So I hope that will be enough. And that will basically go between centers. Now I'd like to have my pieces fairly well balanced so I want the I don't want one bit of the rim much much higher than the other so this is going to have to shift over to there a little bit and give that a go to start with and uh, I think by the look of it this is likely to end up as a, as a kind of outflowing bowl with a natural edge there's not much bark going to be involved I think um, and yep we'll just give that a little go to start with and uh, see what happens now main thing is there's going to be an awful lot of space coming round before the wood so it's essential to move this tool evenly through space without the wood having uh, too much say in uh, where it's going to go so I'm going to start fairly slow and then just aim to sweep the tool through an arc to uh, shape the, uh, shape the shape, get the start to the shape the um, outside can hear I'm into solid wood around there or much more like solid wood there I've got my hand planted on the rest so I can squeeze the tool rather well, got more control that way than if I'm moving my hand violently along the rest Right, see how we're going on that. So flat area there and uh, the low side is there. I really need to get rid of this flat area and even more of that one. I think I also need to shift the whole thing 
slightly that way. It wants to, kind of the cone wants to stick in there, or the tail sender wants to stick in where I had it. I want to make sure that my drive at the other end is in the groove. Otherwise, it's likely to spin. Right, so I can see a double image up here. very gently up at the rim it's likely I'm cutting that way I'm likely to splinter it away so I'll come in from the other side we're really getting quite nice and round that all the way down there and the whole thing is really the top is tilted that way so I want to bring it up much more this way speed up a bit because much better balanced. So the idea is to get the eccentricity off as quickly as possible. So I'm going to have this great kind of arty intrusion there. It's not really my kind of thing, but I'll have that out for a start so it doesn't go flying. Um, that's going to be a nasty little bit to deal with. There's my lowest point, and there isn't another one down there. Oh, there is that one. So I could try and shift the whole thing even further that way. Um, which would get rid of most of that and the top is still sloping that way so I'm inclined to actually do that so I'm going to shift the whole thing yeah, that way I might get rid of most of that. I might end up with a bowl with a hole in the side. And a smaller bowl. I think what's happened here too is the whole thing's just shifted. Go from there. Yep, so there's quite a gap there, so I need to shift it all this way as well. So it just went off my original split, my uh, carved slit a little bit. Finger, right, that looks better. That's still projecting quite a bit, that's where I think I need it. And you can see I'm going to lose a lot of this around here. Eventually there'll be a foot somewhere about where my finger is. Sounds 
solid. I've still got that. Right, so the basic rim is fairly well balanced with this little bit just dropping down below, so I can live with that quite happily. Now, what I want is a foot. I'm going to use a spindle gouge for that, half inch spindle gouge, um, and get a shoulder in about there for the jaws to go up against. Red, the sooner you can get that, uh, the better. Right, so I've now got uh, a definite foot, I've got a fairly good shape, um, and the bark is what there is. Uh, won't be staying on anyway so if I can lever it off now is a good time that doesn't want to come right so that whole lump might come off in one it looks like bark doesn't want to move so that's all right so I'm just going to get this bit off um, and then turn it round and hollow it uh, or rough hollow it so just get this bit off The thing to remember here is that this is cross-grained, so that's going to break off pretty easily. As I said, pretty easily, little shear cut, so that now gets turned round and into a chuck. So here we are mounted on uh, some 50 five millimeter sharp jaws um, most of that bark doesn't want to come off but what I want to achieve now is a cylindrical hole in the middle which will fit over the jaws so I can reverse the uh, the piece onto the jaws and do and complete the outside so uh, I'm going to use a the, th the uh, 3 8 bowl gouge again Running at uh, what are we running at? Running at about uh, 850 at the moment. 850 RPM. And a hole down the middle would mean make the end of the cut much more comfortable. So we just start a depth hole there. It's a 38 spindle gouge half an inch diameter, just take away, or I can go down to at least the bottom of the flute. And put, put up a few rows running more like 1200. Uh, we are indeed running at 1148. Just eyeballing the diameter. Should go over. Should go over the jaws okay. So I'm now going to go in a bit further. The rest comes up with a half inch square end scraper just to make this cylindrical. I want to get down into solid wood so that I can 
manipulate the piece if I want to over the chuck jaws and uh, gosh, that's really that bark is on very well well I can take a little bit more out of the center there press goes down again slightly So that gets me to that stage. Now this can go over the chuck jaws. And it can run true, but I can also just manipulate it a little bit if I want to get these shoulders in a slightly different alignment. That's way higher than, well it's not way higher than the bark, but is the bark going to stay on is the point. Um, I don't really want the bark on, so I'm just going to get that off. And probably the best way to do that is with, uh, when I'm on here, with some pliers. Probably when the uh, piece is a little bit thinner too, we'll just have a little look and see. I think it was like a visit to the dentist. doesn't want to come off very easily. Just lock the spindle. Right, now I take the really take the uh, I've taken that off all off assuming it would come off anyway in the long run uh, still a little bit more ready to come off there so it's going to come off anyway might as well come off now now that might have to be uh, taken off with a wire brush later but what I'm really anxious about is when I look at this piece when it's finished I want to have this roughly in the same plane at the moment one side is way lower than the other I'd really like it sitting like that so this is going back into the lathe tilted as much as I can at that angle And it should be there, so the teeth are barely gripping up at the back here. And I shall get into this with the with the half inch square end again. Now this is actually the second time it's happening because uh, I failed to move the camera the first time. Getting a number of different shoulders in here now. Getting onto that to the gouge. going to get smaller and smaller so I'm quite a bit off center there and 
and I really want to bring that out to there. Oops, going the wrong way. The top, the top right. Will we? I will do this bit. Just get in onto the, the truly round bit first, and then I can manip manipulate it from there. I really want to come out with that. Oh, this is looking very wacky. Very wacky indeed. Right, that be quite exciting. So, I'm going to use the half inch spindle gouge for this one. First thing is to get a, a foot I can grab, a shoulder. Just easing the tool in, so if nothing else, I can grab that in some bigger shark tools. And just nibble away at that. And as always, it's a question of getting rid of what I don't want. And seeing what I can do with what's left. So, I've got a wider base than I thought I was going to have. And it's also a bit deeper than I thought it was going to be. So I can take off this bit here. Um, I'm going to have this very dramatic fissure now, right down to the bottom by the look of it. Um, bring the speed up a bit. That will be my foot now, or the basic foot diameter. And I'm going to use the uh, same half inch spindle gouge, it's going to come straight up the side here. Right, try and take far too much there, quite an overhang, so I just need to drift the tool out and take that in two or three goes. Well, in fact, I'll even come around here, just use the wing of the tool. Right, I'll come in, in fact, from the other side. I'm into solid timber there, and that's almost gone. A little fissure, which I didn't really like, and now I can see pretty much how the piece is balanced up. I've got almost no rim there at all, um, so I can now start to uh, I'll take this off, uh, true up the inside. Now I've got very little left just there, so that's, in fact, I'll be lucky to hang on to that. The next thing is to uh, just throw up the inside. Oh, that was a good catch, catching the whole of the uh, the right wing. 
on that shoulder. That shoulder which is no longer there. So that solid timber, that, so if I take any of that down from either side, I'm going to have that long, thin uh, bit. That will probably now come off. And with a rim like this, which is going to be a little bit battered, uh, when it comes to it, I can singe the edge and uh, so it'll be a kind of blackened rim and that means I'll also be able to cope with that if I lose that little bit I'll be able to burn it and make it look as though it was always there at least that's the idea so I now need a shoulder on the inside I can put over the jaws Okay, now I can do the shape I want. So now, skewed uh, shear scraper, do up the bottom. Set the diameter for my foot. Half inch spindle guards again. Just cut straight in in a moment. Squeeze it back and start to develop the shape. Uh, I don't want to cut that way because it's going to be too awkward. Uh, or I'm, I'm too likely to splinter the um, splinter the rim. Come back in there. That seems to be cutting well, so keep going. about that. Uh, not quite a true curve so I'll just take that off with a shear scraper. Little lump there, little dip just there. Just tilt the tool on its edge to shear scrape. Do that now. What to do with the foot? Um, just a little kind of fairly straight foot, I think, on this one. Teeny groove at the top of the foot, that's where the jaws will sit, and across the bottom, well. Get all the guys you don't. And I can sand that. So that actually came up a lot better than I was expecting. Um, it's uh, just been sanded with 180 and 240, which uh, didn't take more than a minute or so. And uh, it'll now go back into these jaws. And if the jaws, if the uh, foot is the right size for the jaws, uh, it should sit in there all right. And this foot is flared outwards, so it's narrow at the bottom than it is at the top. And so the jaws are going to sit into that little groove just at the top there.
Well, that's the idea anyway, and fortunately they do. So, that'll be that. Now, you can see I don't have very much to play with. Uh, you use a shorter rest. And uh, the two I've got, I guess we'll use this one. Have a rest which I can tilt inside if I want to fairly easily. Right, so the main characteristics of this rim are that that's got a slope in there, so uh, I'm going to lose a little bit of that. Um, but we'll cope with that a little bit later. I'd like to get rid of that little bit of bark. And uh, right, that'll be that. And uh, away we go with it. Doesn't need to be much thinner. Uh, I've got quite a bit to play with down in there, so I'm going to do this with the 3 8 ball gouge. make sure that the rim so the wall things here is going to be pretty well even so the rim looks okay now that little bit just up there there's still a hint a little bit of blonde wood which was uh, the kind of pointy bit which I thought was going to lose altogether I won't I'll just uh, burn that little bit that's feeling a little bit fatter than it need to be Pick up the cut and I'm actually watching it over at about four o'clock. Uh, after that, I'll use do the rest with a uh, scraper. I should probably have measured this. Um, a little more accurately that feels fine I can feel what's happening down there and uh, I just want to take rather than risk getting in here with um, straight away with the gouge and going around the corner I don't want to risk this edge I can get around a little bit further with the gouge um, and I can go a little bit deeper at the bottom so bevel not rubbing there but it will be this time rather get round here with the scraper just feel I've got a bit more control over the shape and I've got a little bit of depth to play with there oh that was uh, just a bit too much edge in contact with the wood at once and it's got me down to the right depth uh, right wall thickness there so uh, that's pretty good and if that will go around the corner there which it will just it's just what I need now I'm trying to keep out of the way of the camera kind of lump just there otherwise it's pretty good now if you're not quite sure if your memory is very short term uh, you can having found the lump just put a little pencil mark in roughly where you need to go supporting the other side the back of the cut with fingers on the outside whoops that was a, a bit hard across the bottom.
Right, that's it, and that gets sanded. And I've still got a whole piece of wood there rather than just a hole. That might vanish with the sanding. When it comes to sanding something like this, um, you can do it with handheld abrasives. But the problem is that as it comes round, it hits the, the kind of leading edge and that gets sanded much more than the trailing edge over here. And uh, it's very easy to lose the nice kind of even look to the, uh, to the edge. Uh, so, uh, and also if you slip, your fingers are going to be in the gap, which is painful. So I tend to do this with, uh, I use an angle drill. Um, which runs at about 1300 RPM, somewhere around there. Or no, it goes up to 2400. Um, but that allows me to, I can fix the spindle so it doesn't move and then get in just uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the power sanding. get a pretty nice surface fortunately it doesn't need too much doing to it there's a little bit of picked up grain there and if it's there it probably is on the other side as well yeah a little bit in there so deal with that and the other side was there The other thing you can do, which I've forgotten about, is you can just let the let the motor take, let the uh, sander take it around. It's rather like using uh, a rotary sander, which doesn't have any power. Right, that looks all right. And I don't, unfortunately, have any finer discs, so I'm going to have to do it by hand, uh, which is the. Um, the 240 grits and uh, I'll use a bit of rubber backing for that. I don't enjoy doing this bit. And he's trying to put minimum pressure against the wing. Uh, bark just there. I thought it was going to have to burn the rim, but uh, I think it'll probably look all right just as it is. That's 240 grit, and uh, this is going to get some uh, boiled linseed. Squeeze a little bit in there. That's it. And uh, this this will get used, I hope, or if somebody doesn't buy it to use, I will use it. And a uh, little nut bowl or something like that. I 
And the oil will get into the little fissures. There are, there are a couple of little kind of splitty things there. More on the back. Oh, it doesn't look too bad at all. Make sure there's no loose ends which can catch the rim. That's that. I need to. Uh, there's a little bit of kind of. This is not completely dry, and uh, I should have put some plastic. Uh, between the jaws and the foot. So that's now going to have to be rechucked, which is not a major issue. Um, so we'll just uh, switch the camera off while I get the gear for that. So here we are, um, a waste block. Which is running pretty true, which is good. Um, some non-slip cloth which I forgot to get out. Just have that and uh, probably fold it across that'll be alright. That goes over there. Tail centre comes up. A little bit of MDF with a little hole in the middle which locates the, you know, the tail stock. Just pull that in till it runs true. Now, all I need to do at this stage really is just sand that off, so I can do that with my uh, bit of 240 grit. Just make sure it's all gone. Right, well there's the hint of the jaws squozing in there, so that just gets turned off. People are very nervous about jam chucks and uh, jamming up stuff like this, but uh, this is the way it always used to be done before we had the modern chucks uh, until the, really the late 80s. The late 1980s, that is. And, right, so that's that. That can just have its bottom wiped, and that's it. And I'll leave that plain for the moment so I can sign it, um, and we'll put it up here and have a look.